Hello good people welcome back to my channel the nature and the wild so today we're going to discuss a very important topic into the wildlife photography if you ever encountered mostly we all encountered the same issues at some point where we miss the focus or our camera is continuously hunting for the subjects and to try to keep it in the focus and we miss the shots so in this kind of scenario we must understand all the beginner photographers we must understand how our camera's autofocus system is working what is the autofocus system what kind of mode we should use and when to use so let's discuss about it little bit in next 5 to 10 minutes and stay with me so first thing first i have my camera canon eos r7 i love this camera by the way very nice good for wildlife photography with a aps-c sensor go and check it out so on my camera the first option if I go into the menu and I have autofocus operations. So what does autofocus operation mean? In the autofocus operations, the camera try to focus on the subject. And all the new age cameras very intelligent and they have some intelligent autofocus operation options. So normally you have on Canon R7, the first one is the one shot. So one shot means you take your camera, put in front of the subject, you press your shutter button halfway, you focus the subject, your camera can see it, you click the picture. It's very good for the still subjects. What does it mean? If you have a bird sitting on a porch nicely, not moving too much, you can just use the one shot to achieve a very nice focus and sharp image. But what are you going to do? If your subject is moving too much because small birds in the wildlife, they move too much or an animal is running too fast or a bird is flying they are dynamic movements you cannot predict which basically where this bird or this animal will move ahead at this condition you must need your camera to consistently focus and track the subject and for that we use the second option called ai servo your camera will be more intelligent to track the moving subject as you move your camera towards your subject's movement and like this you can always achieve the great focus for the subject. next once we know which what kind of autofocus operations we should use we must go and look for the autofocus area happen when you try to shoot the picture and if you see your subject is just sitting on one place you take your camera and focus on it but the camera inside the camera you need to set it up the autofocus area Otherwise, your focus point or your camera will scan each and every part of the frame and then try to achieve the right focus. But that's what we don't want. In that scenario, let's discuss about the autofocus area. The first one, I have the spot autofocus. So that means your area is small. You just point your camera to the subject. The autofocus is achieved. Focus is locked. You take the picture. So it's a very tiniest spot. It's just a single dot, single point to focus on your subject. Second one is the one point of focus. It will be only one point. So if your bird just move tiny bit here and there, you will lose your focus points and you have to readjust again. Then you have little bit expanded area and that has four small dots or four helpers around to help the um, to achieve the right focus so if you just locked on your focus on a bird and the bird is little bit flap and move left and little bit right or up and down you still your camera will adjust the focus point according to the subject because the focus is locked on the subject okay so this is relatively small then you have expand area out focus where you have small autofocus point in the middle which is going to lock on the subject and you have these eight small helpers so you will get a little bit more space subject still move here and there a little bit your camera will keep the focus locked on the subject and that is very good i will give you some example after i finish the explanation when to use which one and that will really make uh, make sense then you have three zone autofocus f1 f2 and f3 so there are three um, Jones as you see on the screen um, so these are some more space and uh, give the camera to read some less space on the mirror um, on your frame and achieve that focus so we must think when we want to use them 
and the last one is the whole area autofocus where you aim your camera to the subject and when you lock the camera is going to read the whole frame of on the cam and then it will try to detect the subject and lock the focus on it so now um a real life scenario when to use what let's say you have a small bird sitting on it and uh, inside the branches so if you put up your camera and try to focus on it what's going to happen your camera is going to hunt the focus we call it hunt the focus that means your camera will try to understand which branch or which subject i need to focus on so if you have at that point a spot autofocus then you know precisely that your focus need to lock on the subject you aim your camera to the subject you lock the focus and it will just stick to your cam mm, your subject not move here and there second one expand the area with the eight dots or four dots that give you more flexibility to choose area you need to into autofocus whether it is eye or the face or the whole uh, put it in the focus now i give you one more scenario a bird is flying and if you at that time if you use just a spot autofocus then you need to keep tracking your subject very precisely and uh, in the real life scenario um it needs a lot of practice to to track the subjects and that scenario you can use one of the zone one two or three which give you little bit more space and if you keep your subject inside that space your camera will intelligently lock the focus on the subject so these are the some scenarios where you can use this according to your need so most of the time i put my camera on the spot auto focus because i know i am going to aim on the subject aim on the bird or the animal and just highlight its eyes and will click the picture next option once you set up your auto focus area very important you must turn on the subject tracking shooting the animals birds so put your subject tracking on and subject detect to the animal then your camera can easily identify which one is the animal and uh, it will start tracking the animal and you can turn on the eye tracking so if you see these all are the options autofocus operations servo and then you have the autofocus area put it on the spot on and then you have the um animal detection on and then you have your subject detection on and the eye tracking they all work as a sandwich as all together and they make sure that your camera can achieve a great autofocus system this is very much important um in the wildlife photography to understand your autofocus system now the extra bonus on the Canon R7 we have uh, some cases that is going to support these autofocus systems to work more constructively uh, those are the cases so if you look on the case i normally use the case 2 where i have um, configured it as per my need and this case is basically make sure you how your autofocus is going to how your autofocus of the camera is going to behave in the real life scenario so if your subjects move too much so you need to you need to set up a tracking sensitivity of your autofocus system so i always put it to the locked on so i don't want my subject if my subject also moved my autofocus should be locked on on the subject as soon as i come back to the subject and then you have the acceleration and deacceleration that means the movement of your of your bird of your animal or of the subject if the movement is too fast too dynamic or it's slow so your autofocus system or your camera can determine that uh, changes and can achieve the great autofocus after these all settings what you need to do to achieve you need to set up your camera's back button this one as a autofocus remove your autofocus systems from your shutter button and put it on the back button why you need to do that if you do that so the main thing is that you will never lose the focus on your subject because when your sub your autofocus system is on your shutter button you lock the autofocus the subject move you have to readjust so the camera have to readjust the whole autofocus system to uh, to lock lock it again but when you have the back button as autofocus setup you locked one time your subject moves you come back to the subject you will see your autofocus is still locking on the subject and you just press your shutter button to fire and take the picture but if you don't do that every time you press to take the picture your camera will readjust the focus systems and that's not very good during the real scenarios because you will lose a lot of time and you will lose the exact focus on the exact time and you will miss a lot of shots so 
all the beginners guys please start using this thing and um, let me know if you want to know some more stuff on the camera i will help you and i will make more videos for you but be in mind understanding your camera understanding the right autofocus system autofocus setup and how to use them in during the real life scenarios that's only comes by the practice so go out and practice practice and practice so thank you guys for staying with me and uh, i will see you in the next episode please like and subscribe my channel put all your comments i will definitely get back to you with the answers and thanks for all the love you have given me so far thanks a lot